the Revisionary Podcast with your host, Juan Carlos. The Revisionary Podcast. Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Revisionary Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Juan Carlos. First and foremost, I want to start by uh, making an announcement. This is just another reminder that a few days from now, on Saturday, April 17th, we have our live episode on the Bullhorn app. Please make sure that you download the Bullhorn FM app and make sure you follow Revisionary Podcast. I'll also put out a link so that you know what to expect. Uh, it should be really fun. I'm, I'm really looking forward to doing it. And also, finally, going to reveal this since uh, people on social media already know. Um, our live guest is going to be uh, Nicole Anthony from Big Brother. She's coming back. Um, she's going to tell us a sto- another story. And, you know, we're just going to chat. And like I said, it's a huge opportunity to just ask her questions live and just have a conversation with her. So it's pretty cool. Come hang out. Come check it out. We re- I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. That'll be April 17th, Saturday at 11 Eastern. So make sure you tune in and let's just have a good time. Also, I want to take a time out and just uh, acknowledge some of the things that have been going on. Um, you know, last week we uh, we lost Earl Simmons DMX, and I just want to acknowledge that on this podcast. It's uh, it's something sad that we're all dealing with. And personally, I you know I tell you guys I'm from the Bronx, but you know I spent part of my uh, youth growing up in Yonkers, so Yonkers is also home for me. And you know, when I think of Yonkers, two people have always stood out in my mind, and that's always been. Jada Kiss and DMX. So, you know, losing him has been really sad and I know it's really hard. So I just want to acknowledge out there and, you know, and just recognize the great talent that this world has lost. And, you know, as we all deal with this, I just want to say thank you for all the music and for all them specifically Rough Rider Anthem. You know, that song always kind of made me, you know, swell up whenever I came up, you know, that was, that was my jam. I also uh, want to announce um, our upcoming guest. So t- today we'll be sitting down to speak with uh, Oheni Cornelius. Uh, Oheni's just, he's a, he's a real fun guy. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to this conversation. He's super talented in a variety of different areas, and he's he's really funny. And I love his tagline. His branding is particularly unique. He constantly calls himself the second funniest comedian, which is, I don't know, I it's just his thing. And it, his brand is so strong, so I've always enjoyed that. So I look forward to sitting down and having this conversation with him. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get Oheni on the line. Hello, Oheni. How are you? Welcome to my lair. (laughs) (laughs) I'm excited that you've decided to join us here on the Revisionary Podcast. Yes, yes. We rewrite history together. (laughs) (laughs) So what have you been up to? Oh, man, uh, I don't know if you know I'm O'Henny Cornelius, extraordinaire person being extraordinary. That's what I've been doing during this pandemic. I've just still been doing shows, traveling. Uh, you know, I got Smokes and Jokes comedy, uh, the the traveling uh, 420 friendly comedy show. Uh, I've been working on a lot of music. I bought an eight track recorder and started like recording a whole bunch of voices throughout all of America and just recording sounds. And I I don't know if I'm going to release a project off of it, but I just released revolutionary ratchet. My last album, Mm -hmm. like um, a turned up positive album that has like turned up ratchet at uh, beats. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, a mixer. So that's called, that's why it's called revolutionary ratchet. And I'm about to release a song called The Self-Care Song. And, you know, I I go back and forth between music and comedy. That's why as a comedian, I'm known as the second funniest comedian in the world, because I don't always like focus in on just comedy. Sometimes it's about having a message. Sometimes I got to act. Sometimes I'm going to make music. Yeah, I mean, um, so, yeah. And, and Harlem River Yacht Club, we're doing it. It's, it's the, it's the, everyone can't fit on the yacht, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, so let, tell me a little bit about this. So you, first yeah. off, you're more of an entertainer than a comedian, right? We're just an overall, just artist. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this as slight. I'm taking this as slight. Nah, if you tell me, uh, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no. Like I, I, I step up to the arena that I need to step up to. Um, I do wear a lot of hats, but um, mostly it came from just, I am a funny person. And if people hang out with me, they like, I'd be having cats rolling and um, 
translating that onto stage, what was and still is a difficult process for me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, Because my natural funny is different from like the comedy that I have in my mind and I want to present. So, um, so yeah, comedy for me is that I don't describe myself as an artist anymore. I'm just like, I'm O'Henny and I like to do. And I don't think of like myself as an actor or a musician. I'm just, I'm O'Henny and I like to do, or I get paid to do this when it's necessary, you know? Um, so, the pandemic has changed my mind. So. <laughs> Let me ask you something, because uh, yeah. I like to ask talk me. about So I know a few months back, right? You ran yeah. into an issue where mm-hmm. one of your jokes was actually stolen by a Netflix show. Can we touch on oh, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They janked they jank my joke. They janked my joke. And for a while, I was mad. And I, I talked to a couple of comedians and actors. And people were like, um, oh, you know what happens? And then... And then I'm like, but I like, I'm like, I understand it happens, right? but it's not morally correct. And then I saw Dave Chappelle on, on Netflix talking about like, yeah, hey, man, they stole my, this is not morally correct. I'm like the big, the big character can say it, but you know, when the, the second funniest comedian, the guy that you see who can touch is like, yo, these people are stealing our jokes and it's not what's up. Um, I, I I did a video about it. Did you see the video? Yeah, that was the craziest thing. Watching you do the side by side, that blew my mind. Yeah, no, you, you got to do that. You got to show them. You got to show them, like, yo, this is such an authentic piece of me that I've been doing for so long that it sort of it sort of robs my opportunity as an independent artist of doing my joke. Because now when I do it, if someone saw it on Netflix first, it's like, oh, he stole that joke. You know what I mean? Or and. And it's already you're fighting against so much when you're in a comedy club, when you're in a small room, when you're in a bar, because you have to fight against so many elements. So thinking about these big people coming down to be like, I like that right here. I like how that's phrased and I'm going to, you know, Mm -hmm. Uh, but also who knows then maybe it was analogous and I'm just tripping and I'm, I'm fucking <laughs> like, you know, I, I I haven't been in this industry for a long enough time to know when my, when my material is swiped. Yeah. Well, yeah. on that note, yeah. why don't we uh, go ahead and jump into this? Yeah. Go ahead. The stage is yours. Go ahead and tell us your story. Oh man. Um, so I, I promised I would never tell this story, but I'm going to tell this story because, you know, <laughs> uh, life is precious. Life is precious. And um, I definitely won't use names, but I, I definitely will have change a fun time telling the story. Just use uh, names, but change them. Okay. Um, I, I, was, I was in L.A. I like to go to L.A. a lot. I travel to L.A. a lot. And I was renting a friend's RV. Uh, I lived in an RV, a black young black non-meth head actor comedian musician weirdo living in an rv in la not the most popular thing at the time now everyone's like man i just want to get up get up out of here and live in the rv but you know at the time it wasn't as popular so i was living in this rv and a girl i knew we'll call her deborah a girl i knew uh deborah she was here in New York. And I, I just had saw her in New York. And then when I got out to LA, I saw Deborah in LA. Now, Deborah just booked a new TV show. She's been on the TV show for a couple of months. So Deborah's feeling herself. Deborah got some money. Deborah's living the life. I'm setting up the story. You already see what's happening. It's a clash, clash in time. Two, two lost souls. Like, you know what I mean? It was like, I was a Montague. She was a Capulet. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? Montague's dirty blacks. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but so, so we're at, we're at this popular black club in LA and she's hanging out with someone that saw me work as an artist. Now I'm more of, again, I'm, I'm even in the acting field, I'm less popular amongst the people and people just know me. Like, you know what I mean? The other artists know me for my, my work. So the girl comes in and she's like, I'm going to call this other girl, uh, Sarah. Mm -hmm. So Sarah 
fine. Sarah is fine. And Deborah is also fine. But Deborah's now on, they're both on working on the same show. But Sarah is the, she does the wardrobe. Mm-hmm. She does wardrobe and the other right. girl's like a she the other girl's like a lead actress. Boom. So so I'm chatting, yeah, 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 ba ba ba. I got some I got some uh energy going with uh Deborah. And Sarah's like, here's a picture of you on a project I worked on all of these years ago. I was like, oh word, let me see that. Mm-hmm. So I had chemistry with Sarah, really. That was really like the big energy. But Deborah. Mm-hmm. was popular popping and i had saw her a couple of times so of course i'm like let me chat chat with deborah boom boom we mix it up we get in mixy mm, we in there drinking drinks dancing hola hola eh. i don't know if you know that that track <laughs> but that's what it was you know what i mean right. uh, uh this is might have been about the time future mask off came came out and shout out to future for actually living up to his name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so, so I, I take Deborah outside and uh, I leave Sarah in the club, me and Deborah outside. We in the parking lot, me and Deborah kissing, blah, blah, blah. She giving me a little handy Sandy. Um, you yeah, feel me? And, and, and I'm like, yo, let's go back to your place. She's like, nah, I don't want to rush things. I don't want to feel like no uh, promiscuous girl. I'm like, all right, boom, that's cool. Me, I'm an understanding person. I'm handsome, I'm tall, I'm funny. In real life, I don't need to pressure a girl for, uh, you know what I mean, her right. stuff, stuff. So I'm like, boom, all right, whatever. So I kiss her, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, all right, she's like, Wait, where you living? I'm like, I live in an RV while I'm out here in L.A. <laughs> right now is parked in Venice. Right. Uh, she ain't really believe me. I, I guess that's what it was because she was like, she laughed, blah, blah, blah. Sarah came out. Deborah was like, yo, Sarah, can you believe this fool live in an RV? Sarah was like, ooh, that's cute. I was like, again, my better judgment in my back of my mind should have hollered at Sarah. We had a connection for right. a long time. She was humble about it. She was with, I was in my humble state. I just read a quote that um, what works is when you have two people of equal um, finances where one is good at uh, producing the product and the other is good at selling the product. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, so that's that's a relationship that works. So me and Sarah would have been, I felt like could have been that. But me and Deborah represented in my mind the like, boom, we're going to do the, the we both, you know what I mean? Popping, we both on the same field thing. We both actors. We have the same ilk. Um, so she didn't want to have me come over. That night, I went over to another young lady's house. Okay. You feel me? And it wasn't even no extracurricular activities going on. on I just on. went. To, yeah, I have a question for you. Yes, sir. Did you go? Did you show up with a plan, or were you just straight up parachuting? What you mean? Parachuting is when you show up to a city. You know, you don't really have a place you want. You're gonna sleep, so you kind of try to find like a place to sleep that night. Even though I know you had your RV, but I, you know, I didn't know if you were. Were you? Like, no, 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 no. I have. A, I had an RV. My man's in them live right down in in, gotcha. in Hollywood. Like, nah, I know a lot of people in LA. Gotcha, I'm like, gotcha. I touched down in LA. I got fr- well friends out there. I got like a couple friends, friend, for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. But I got people I know who at least for a night I could like kick it on the couch okay, or something okay. like that where it wouldn't be crazy. But I had a plan of living out in the RV for a little bit. And then when my other, my people's going to come back for her RV that I was renting from her, I was going to Airbnb a room, which I, I did. See. You know what I mean? So yeah. you weren't, it wasn't like you were trying to, okay, I see you weren't at the club trying I, to find a place to sleep. Gotcha. No, no, nah, nah, I wasn't, I wasn't homosexual this <laughs> night. I was just like, yeah. I was just horny. So I was like, you, she was telling me her location, right. which was closer than my RV. Got it. Understood. Okay. My, 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 the RV I had had a shower. It had a queen size bed in it. I wasn't, it wasn't no whack RV. You know what I mean? It's, mm-hmm. but 
the idea of a young black guy living in an RV at that time was just not like, even as you talk, I talk about it. You're like, Oh, you sure you wasn't homosexual? No, no, I was no. like, <laughs> I was like, see, see like a, 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 a person can't even like, you know, <laughs> no, no, no. I'm gonna keep it with you though. Cause I've seen yeah. some RVs. Like I've seen some really nice, expensive RVs. Yeah. They look nice in some people's apartments. Yeah. It, it's definitely, it wasn't like the top tier, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We <laughs> like, uh, National Lampoon's RV. Right. You know, I'm not Chevy Chase in the pockets, but I did have an RV that had space. It had music, musical instruments in there. Had a bathroom that worked, a shower that worked, and a queen size bed. So it, I, I had, I had wiggle room of life. It was a, I was living a good life. I park up, pull up, go to Venice, walk out, go to the beach. I go DJ a show, show. My friends come to me. I park. I was parking at the, at the show, pulled out, DJ on the sidewalk, right for the store, pack up, go right back in the RV. They let me stay there for the night, pay me. I get a little young lady come through. You know what I mean? I was living yeah. a good life. Okay. It was, it was not, it was not like, you know, I was, <laughs> it was a very artsy, non-conventional life. Right. And it was, it was not in, it was not in conjunction to where I was supposed to be in my life. You feel me? I feel like because I, or I was where I was supposed to, where I went, but it wasn't what I was supposed to do because I was immature at that time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I had at this point, uh, a different situation going on at home in New York city that I just wasn't, I wasn't uh, mature enough to, to continue on. You feel me? Yeah. Um, at the time. So I'm out there partying, blah, blah, blah. So she like, I'm gonna come see you tomorrow. Right. I'm gonna come see you tomorrow at the RV. Cause I think she think I'm like the Prince of Zamunda and I'm lying to her and she gonna get there. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be a jacuzzi. I'm gonna be like, Sene, why did you what did you do, Sene? You know what I mean? But wait, wait, is this Deborah or Sarah or the girl? This who... is De- this is Deborah. This Deborah, is Deborah. Okay. So I I goes to my friend's house again. This is a, just a young lady who's a friend of mine. We didn't do any extracurricular activities. But this is a third young lady, like this is a third young lady who's a yeah, yeah, she's Gabby. She's this my friend. Gotcha. I'm just I'm just giving you this instance because this explains the rest of the story. I did not go back to the RV, so I didn't shower and anything like that. When I woke up at the young lady's house, uh, I got a I got a message from Deborah like I'm gonna meet you over in Venice. So I'm like, boom, I woke up to the young lady. I was like, yo, I got to go. Um, I'm going to head out to my RV, blah, blah, blah. Everything was copacetic. Now, I don't travel on on public transportation a lot out there. Mm-hmm. So on my way, I'm doing the Googles and I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I can be a bit uh, ditzy with Google, listening to Google, traveling, trying to figure out the quickest route. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. So I took the train from downtown DTLA to Hollywood and Highland uh, to, to, to get the bus, right? That takes you all the way out to Santa, to Santa Monica, which then takes you to Venice, right. where my where my uh, RV was. But I asked the lady at the bus stop because my phone wasn't giving me some service or something. I can't remember what it was. I asked the lady at the bus stop. I was like, hey, where's the bus that goes to Santa Monica? She was like, oh, it's just down the way at uh, at whatever the block was, like four blocks down, four blocks right. down. Now, I'm from New York. Right. You say four blocks, that's... 10 minutes. Yeah, that's like right there. Yeah. When I tell you I walked in the hot Cali sun for 45 minutes to get to this fucking next bus stop, which was was not, it was like four blocks, but driving, it would have been like three minutes, but walking and me looking back and waiting to see it, I'm like, is she, am I going in the right place? Yeah. So I hops on the bus. By this time, I'm hot. I'm sweating. Right. I'm fucking, I'm, go, I'm going through it. I get to the joint. I get to the RV. Uh, me and the young lady, Deborah, was supposed to meet up. I was like, she's like, let's meet up. I think, I guess she gave me the code word. She was like, since you buy Venice, let's go by the beach and play basketball. Because I was like, I want to work out. My interest out there really wasn't 
sex, but since we had met up that right. night, that's why that night I was like, let's pop off. The next day I'm like, I got my own agenda. You know what I mean? So she wanted to meet up. So I was like, all right, I want to work out. She compromised was let's go to the beach, play ball. Uh, so as soon I go put on my New York ball gear, as soon as I get there, my arms, my armpits is funky. As soon as I get there, I didn't get a chance to shower because she hit me like she just there. So I just put on my, uh, my, my 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 long pants with my short shorts over it because I play basketball like that. That's how I w- I dress like Billy Hoyle from uh, <laughs> from White Man Can't Jump. <laughs> uh, so I go and I, I'm like, yo, I meet her by the car. I'm like, look, I just got back here. Let me meet you over by the RV. She's like, nah, you looking bugged out, but let me drive you there. I'm like, nah, let me walk to there. She's like, get in the car. Don't be stupid. I'm like. All right, Deborah, I'm gonna get in the car. Right. I get in the car. My arm's funky. Yeah. She starts roasting me, like, yo, you coming out here dressing wild, blah, blah, blah. And I'm I'm a humble dude. Again, I'm tall, attractive. I could be funky every now and again. And like I don't need to I like I don't need to be rich to be satisfied with life. So I'm okay with myself. I don't I don't the power dynamics don't play in my right. in my heart. You know what I mean? So she's trying to roast me, blah, blah, blah. So we get to the RV, we drive over to the RV, we get to the RV, she start roasting the RV. What? So she thought she start roasting the RV. I'm like, ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. Should we get inside the RV? Now she pulled up, I ain't gonna hold you. She pulled up in a new Lexus. Okay. She pulled up in a new Lexus again. She's on. She was a star on a popular TV show. Right. So she could, her life is changing. So um, I'm telling this story. She she gonna be mad, but she can't say nothing because true. Uh, then the people know who it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so 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 she started roasting the RV, and then she started getting comfortable. I guess I was supposed to like wash up right then and then take her and have sex with her. Cause you know, I, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a I, I was, we did have a, a connection, right? It wasn't the, 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 the wifey like connection that me and Sarah had. Mm-hmm. It was like this. Uh, we see each other a lot. We're in the same field. Uh, visceral sort of connection like that. Right. So I guess she wanted me to like embrace her right then and there in that moment about, with something so i'm like no nah, I'm a, i want to go play ball and then her attitude changed she got mad at me for not buying her uh, uh a sushi burrito <laughs> <laughs> and then uh yeah man uh i i just felt like i felt like when it was all said and done she was mad and i was mad she didn't have a good time and I didn't have a good time. And it was like, so it, didn't it was one of the worst, huh? So no, no, I, nothing happened. I, we, we went to play ball. We got, she got, t- she got into a tissy fit and I guess I was supposed to be apologetic. And I was just like, look, I'm, I'm like, yo, go about your day, go have a good time, blah, blah, blah. And then later on that night I texted, I was like, yo, can I get Sarah's number? And she blocked me. Stop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like that, huh? Just like that, man. Just like that, my friend. <laughs> and you know, I, I didn't. I wasn't even mad. I was just like, you know, she. I didn't have a good time myself, so it wasn't like she, she, she did me any disservice. Like you know, and I, I think that's when it's a two way street, and people realize it's like a two way street, and a guy's time mm-hmm. and energy is like they're spending it with you. And it's not just like you're giving them something and they're not giving anything in return. Then, like you know, I I, I want to I'm promoting that now in my my relationships. Like you know, I, I wish I'm I'm sharing this with you. This is right. our time together. You know, it's not just you're giving me time. I, I appreciate you, but you know, I'm giving I'm giving you time too. <laughs> so yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. Yeah, I'm real excited for this retelling. Like I want to see. Yeah. Where this goes. So, yeah. okay, so we're going to back up. Uh huh. So when did you know that things just weren't going well? Like at what point? The things weren't going well as soon as, as soon as I got straight to the RV as she was pulling up and I smelt my armpits, I knew right then and there our interact. Because the night before, 
it was already I was treading on thin ice. Okay. Because when she found out I was in an RV, and then later on, I didn't tell you like, but she started talking about like how dudes in LA are like all like either gay or bums. And I was just like, look, I, I get it. But until you get an opportunity, we all were we all were either gay or bums, you know. What I mean? <laughs> so, so, so that that's like it, to me, it felt like she got an opportunity and now forgot the the the, the ebb hustle. and flow. Yeah, the hustle and the ebb and flow of life. Right, so, because right. I was I was came to a humble like you know I'm in an RV, blah blah blah. So when when she got there and I, she pulled up and I was like, damn, I'm I'm funky and it's the RV and I know already she got some apprehensions about the RV because I'm about to I'm about to clap these cheeks. She know it like she felt it from the night before. Like you know, uh, it, it was they were about to be you know it was about to be a clap. It was about to be a round of applause. Yeah. But uh, but but you know it just it just didn't it just didn't go down like that yeah I, so but yeah I, that's one of those things in your mind you ever want you ever watch the wonder years yeah of course what and then mean? yeah yeah and you hear him at that time he start talking back he's like i didn't know it at this time but uh you know what I mean? yeah. like that's that was one of those moments i was like you know i was just talking back looking back at my my whole life sometime in the future. And I look back at that mute, that moment, it's going to be me talking over it. Like you're about to funk this up right here. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's just jump right back into this. Go ahead and retell okay. your story. Okay. We jump right back in it. All right. So I'm on Henny. No, no. So yeah. So I'm out there in uh, LA. I uh, got the RV, got the, the RV, the same RV, regular RV. I'm same old Henny. Everything happens leading up to the club. I meet Deborah and Sarah in the club. All right. I meet Deborah and Sarah in the club. Ba ba ba. Me and Deborah make out as per usual outside in the parking lot. Right. You know what I mean? Everything, all of that energy, that sexual energy that we initiate starts. She comes out. Sarah comes out. Sarah comes out, makes the comment about liking the RV. I take notice of that. I take notice of that. Right. And then I don't, I don't, uh, I still don't engage with Sarah. I still engage with uh, Deborah. Interesting. All right. Okay. And I let Deborah uh, and Sarah go over there that night. I don't even ask Deborah to go home with her that night mm-hmm. um, because she still offers to come see me the next day because that's what it was. Uh, so I go, that after that I go to Gabby's house that night. Right. I have the I have the 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 juice and beast of saying no to beautiful women inside of me. So I wreck shop on Gabby, <laughs> Gabby, I wreck shop. I do the, I do the soldiers play inside of her, uh, <laughs> inside of her. Oh, uh, so you hook up with Gabby in the story. Yeah. In this story, I hook up with Gabby. Got gotcha. you. She, she's like, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm just, I'm just filled with virility. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hook up with Gabby. It's a great night. Me hooking up with Gabby makes me take a shower that night per morning you know right. half morning because you know whatever so i shower that morning which makes me be fresh when i leave okay i still get lost mm-hmm. i still get lost all of that happens i still get lost i still get lost i travel out when when deborah pulls up to venice at the i'm fresh mm-hmm. i'm still dressed weird but my armpits are fresh. Right. All right. So me and Deborah have a decent time. It's not okay. I clap those cheeks. <laughs> I clap those cheeks. Clap the heck out of those cheeks. They right. get, you know what I mean? Stadium applause. Everybody's standing. Ovation. You know what I mean? <laughs> but me and Deborah realize that we just give off not that kind of energy. And to actually further our sexual endeavors would be toxic. So she suggests because Sarah digs my style, they suggest both of them agree that Sarah and I should date Mm -hmm. and me and Sarah start dating and have a long standing relationship of positivity where she dresses me fly and I go out. And I, I wear her clothes that she designs and we have, we have, uh, we have little stylish babies mm. and, uh, I don't know. We, we live, 
happily ever after until we get divorced and we marry new people. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you something. Let, let's start here. Yeah. Why, why didn't you shower in your original story? Like I get the like, cause nothing happened. Yeah, I, that's the thing about it. Nothing happened. And I just went to, I just like laid in my clothes. I was just at my friend's house. I just passed out, went right. to sleep and woke up. Like if you laid at your boy's house, just because it's a woman, if you laid at your boy's house, right? You're going to shower at your boy's house. If you just pass out, you smoke a blunt, you pass out and you wake well, up in the morning. This is what I'm saying. If I spent yeah. the night anywhere, but yeah. especially someone I'm close to, I personally would shower. I'd be like, yo, bro, can I hop in your shower? that's yeah i don't know i there's mad times i spend the night at my boy's house or girl's house and it's just i wake up in the morning i go home and shower like i'm i just I, like you know i wake up in the morning i just go home and handle all my personal because i i, I want to get my three s's in you know what i mean and i can't get my three s's in at your house what's the three s's if i'm mine oh <laughs> Yeah, shave, shower, <laughs> you got the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, no, so it's interesting, and this is why. And I think this shells, is why, seashells. <laughs> this is yeah. why I'm a bad person to ask this question because I'm the type yeah. of person that if I'm close enough to my bed, I'm getting home to my bed that night. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But if I, if I, I wasn't right. No, but that's yeah. the thing. If I'm far away enough where I need to spend the night, I'm taking a yeah. shower at your place in the morning. That's just okay. How I yeah, you're you're a good human. You're probably like you know you probably never like you never had to worry about Corona ever. You are just always hand sanitizing yourself <laughs> since the 1950s. So like you know I I can't I can't lie. Like there's been plenty of nights I I, I crash at my friend's house, boy's sure. house, girl's house. I wake up in the morning, don't brush my teeth, smoke a blunt, leave out, and uh, go home. And then I go. At, and once I get home, yeah. Once I get home, I'm I'm. Clean as a whistle. I have clothes because if I take a shower there, I don't have clothes to change into. Right. That's a valid point. That's a valid point. So let me ask yeah. you this. Let me ask you this. So you had an opportunity to avoid the whole Deborah situation in yes. your retelling, but yes. you know, instead you chose to add Gabby, Deborah, and Sarah. So yeah. and what was what was the reason behind behind that artistic choice? Well, because it's uh, for me, it's like it's like, you know, I like Dolomite movies and uh, <laughs> I like Black Dynamite, you know. So if I got to retell the story, uh, I want to I want to get in as much machismo that I don't have in my natural life. <laughs> you know? So. So, yeah, like if, if it's if, if like in that story, how preposterous is it for Deborah to have an understanding that now she's like, no, you know you should be with Sarah. Like, you know, that the rarity of that is, sure. is ridiculous. But, you know, if I'm going to retell a story and live a good life, I'm going to live the good life. <laughs> so, you know? and let me ask you this. Uh, has anything ever happened with, uh, with Gabby that that was even an option in your second story? Yes, yes. Gabby's an old friend. Gotcha. When you said old friend, I assume you meant old platonic friend. No, no. Gabby's an old friend that now, like, it's just situation when I think, I think, I think, I don't know, because I'm an artist, maybe I lived a different, weird life younger. Right. But like, sometimes like we, you just be like fornicating mm -hmm. and, and it's like, you just meet a person, you fornicate with them. And then it's like, no, nah, that's not going to work. We're friends. Sorry. And then you just stay close to them. Right. And they just be your friends. And like, and then you just always had that memory of like, I, we fornicate. We fought it. We, I, I fought it to you once, didn't I? I fought it to you. And, uh, uh, so, 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 yeah, it, it's, it's, it was a lot of that in my youth that I feel like. And now some of those people did transfer over into friends that I just have conversations with. Now. Right. It's just, yeah, I, I, yeah, they could lean on me if they came to New York and I could lean on them if I come to there. No, that's beautiful. Let, let me ask you this, though. So yeah. did it ever happen in real life with Deborah? Or did you just blow it completely? I blew it completely. I okay. blew it completely. I blew it. I'm like I, I was, I'm, I was the worst, and I deserved to blow it. Like I did, I wasn't prepared. I didn't have everything, and I was, I, I should have at least blew it with Sarah. That's right. really what should have happened. I should have blew it with Sarah, but you know, I, I saw Deborah the night before. Deborah was shiny. Mm -hmm. Deborah was like, you know, Deborah was uh, talking that talk, and uh, Sarah more more wanted to pace herself at the time, and yeah. and in that and in that in that moment, which I was rightful at that time, I had to go with my my wants and the, 
I, I didn't want to. I didn't want to pace myself. I wanted to. You know, I will say this. It shows a tremendous amount of growth and maturity. The fact that you're able to reflect back on it and mm-hmm. that those are the lessons that you walked away with it from, from with. Of course. Like when, when, anytime you get dissed or played out, like, you know, sometimes you gotta, you, you gotta properly analyze it. It's like, you yeah. know, like, you know, like yo, these people was mad at me for no reason. Like yeah. you had nothing to do with it. You played no part in the, in, in your downfall. So yeah, I got, I got roasted and a part of it was just like my decisions. I got to be more like Juan Carlos. Anytime I spend the night at my friend's house, I'm taking a shower in the morning time. Immediately I'm putting on old clothes, but new body odor. Yeah. And then, but I was at the club. It was cause I was at the club and I'd sweat like, you know, you were dancing. Yeah. We were da- like we like full on. When I tell you, we it was like a movie. Like it was sweating in there. We got outside the club. Me and Deborah was kissing. You know what I mean? It was just like nice. And then Sarah comes out and she's like, "Ooh, RV, that's nice." And Deborah's like, "That's stupid. I'm gonna see him tomorrow though to find out." <laughs> and, you know? So so yeah, man. Life is good, man. Life is uh, precious. Life is good. I get that. And look, and I appreciate you being willing to come on the revisionary podcast and sharing your story with us yes. um before i let you go yeah uh we have a few traditions on this podcast okay before i say i just want to okay. apologize though to to deborah gabby and um sarah in this for for even suggesting your names in the story and this is not to incriminate me or yourselves, but it was to enjoy and tell a funny and worthy story. And you guys have a worthy point in my life. And I appreciate you for uh, allowing this to happen from the spirit of the the artistic ancestors. Continue. (laughs) (laughs) Look, well said. I appreciate that acknowledgement. I I mean, hopefully they'll listen to this and uh, appreciate it as well. Um, So we have two traditions on this podcast before we Mm -hmm. let everyone go. Mm -hmm. The first is, we like to pick a charity or an organization to highlight at the end of every episode. Usually we try to pick one that our guest is passionate about. Do you have a charity for us? Uh, yeah, I, I put just cause because like, you know, you should give to something just cause like I don't, there's, there's no ultimate just cause, but you should share what you get financially just cause. So I, I, have my project, the Harlem River Yacht Club, where we're raising money to build a sustainable force field and community for African-Americans, young up and coming African-American men and women to have them have positions of power and a network in inner cities. So we wanna build spaces where young black and brown people can have access to sports and other events that are usually not accessible to people of that financial class system. So we're talking about like golf. We're talking about being able to teach and, and take young kids to see golf uh, fencing. Uh, We have financial backgrounds uh and advisors that's gonna do workshops for free for young kids so that's what i'm raising money for for myself but whoever is out there and have a cause that they stick to and that they find something that's worthy of it give your money to it give your time do something that's worthy of something i don't have anything that's better or know of anything that's better to give to than whatever arises in your heart beautifully said beautifully said um The second tradition that we have on the show is uh, we like to surprise our guests by asking them to share a quick childhood story that puts Mm -hmm. a smile on their face or just generally like makes them feel warm inside whenever they think about it. So first thing that comes to your mind. First thing that comes to my mind is um, I, I was jumped. I was jumped. Okay. By (laughs) I was jumped by two young girls as a young kid, and it was crazy. Two young girls jumped me. Uh, uh, I don't remember why it happened, but I was in the, I was actually in the right. And my mom wanted an apology Mm -hmm. from the girls' mothers Mm -hmm. and the girls' mother 
got an attitude. She refused to apologize. Mm -hmm. And my mother was just like, I just want an apology. It's not something tough to ask for. And again, in this scenario, the girls was just, maybe they were rough playing, whatever it was, blah, blah, blah. The lady got out of pocket with my mother and my mother decided to to lend her some fisticuffs. (laughs) And and when I tell you, it was... It was some of the best boxing I've ever seen in my life uh, between <laughs> like, like, and, and it was, it was just funny because my mother literally had fisticuffs like this and just tap, 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 tap. For so, those of you guys uh, who are listening along and can't watch the video, <laughs> oh, Henny just did the old school, you know, when, when the guy puts both their fists up, but they're yeah, like, the oh. old timey, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the old timey, like, yeah, yeah, she, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, I led a very peculiar youth and uh, I got a lot of quirky stories like that. But um, that, that immediate, when you put me on the spot, I was like, you should have told me I would have prepared something nice to nah, say because we, that we, we like the authentic you know <laughs> like real emotion that's why i like that that question yeah so yeah, yeah. before i let you go um before i let you go before I let go <laughs> do you uh do you have any last words for uh our revisionists or revisionaries excuse me oh i don't what visionaries what the yeah um, that's that's what i call the listeners of the podcast the revisionaries okay i dropped my phone um hey revisionaries i would say Go out and vote in your local elections and also protest and also revolt. And also there is no proper answer to what's happening out there. And the only thing we can do is continue to work together toward some sort of solution so that we don't let all of the crackers take over Mars. And uh, where can we follow you? Follow me at second funniest comedian in the world. Okay. Then I can follow you back. You know, because I, I won't follow you back from any of my other. Uh, I, I have other ones. If people sure, want to follow, sure, sure. it's different content. But if you want me to follow you back, is that interesting? follow me? Yeah, that's 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 all I really use. Instagram. All right, Instagram. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so without further ado, I want to say uh, thank you for coming on the Revisionary Podcast. Goodbye. The Revisionary Podcast. So I feel like it's appropriate to remind everyone that the conversations that are had on this podcast are the views and sole views of our guests. They have nothing to do with the opinions reserved on this podcast. Um, oh, honey's great, but, uh, you know. For those women included in the story, please don't come for me. <laughs> Definitely don't sue me. He changed y'all names. I think he changed your names. I hope he changed your names. I have no idea. But that's a dope story. I I wish I knew who he was talking about just because now I want to be in the know. I want to know all the tea. But, you know, that was pretty cool. I'm glad he shared that story. Uh, he's going to leave me wondering for weeks. And I want to continue to say to all of you, thank you. Please, and, and uh, if you can, support the charities on this podcast. You know, let's try to make a difference in the world. And I want to thank all of you for your continued support. And as always, thank you for listening. This is the revision.